Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me again to learn a little bit more about our natural communities outside of Tallahassee. So today I am again in Apalachicola National Forest and I am in a longleaf pine savanna. These areas are really interesting. They're fire adapted. They have an amazing set of different species that thrive in them. But we're not gonna talk about that today. We're gonna save that for another video. Instead, today I am out here in search of the green lynx spider. We met the green lynx a little bit in the last video. That was that big bright green spider that was sitting on top of the pitcher plant. And green lynxes are really interesting. They have a very different hunting strategy to most spiders. They have an annual life cycle that's interesting. And then they also do this, this very peculiar color changing phenomenon where they match the color of the plant that they're on. So this is still very poorly understood to science. It's something that we're studying now. Um, so hopefully we'll find some spiders out here that are doing the color changing, matching flowers that they're on. But I've come out to the savanna to look for them because they're often on these plants. This is a liatris. The liatris is a genus of plants with a whole bunch of species and many of those species are found in our savannas. So we're gonna walk around here. We're gonna see if we can find some spiders and hopefully learn a little bit more about them and gain a deeper understanding and deeper appreciation for our eight-legged friends that share the forest with us. There's actually one right there right now. <laughs> So here's our first green lynx spider. This is a female. You can usually tell the females from the males based on the width of their abdomen. So her abdomen's pretty wide. I'm guessing she's a female. Um, and then also because she is exhibiting this really cool color changing phenomenon that we really only see in the female spiders. And so what it seems like is that these spiders have the ability to change the green coloration in their abdomen to match the flower that they're on. This isn't very well understood. This is something that we're studying right now in our lab, actually. Um, but what it seems is that it's only the pregnant females that do this. Um, they do this in the late summer, early fall. Um, and it may function as camouflage to protect them while they're pregnant. It may, camouf it may act as camouflage to hide them from their prey so that they can get more food while they're pregnant. It's probably a combination of both. Um, but it's pretty amazing and we've seen it in purple flowers, in white flowers, and in yellow flowers. So hopefully we'll see some more different colored spiders today. So here's another female green lynx spider also expressing that ability to change colors. So if you look closely at her, the size of her abdomen, and then at those little chevrons, so the little arrows pointing down her abdomen, you can see that she's expressing white coloration in both areas which may be helping her camouflage into that white flower she's sitting on. And if you look closely at her mouth, you can see that she's caught a spider. So she has some prey there. So these are our liatris. This is the plant that I see green leg spiders on the most. And so what they do on these plants is they sit at the very tippy top of the plant, which there's one up here now, and they sit and they wait for a butterfly or a bee or a wasp or some sort of pollinator to come and visit this flower. And when it does, the green lynx will pounce on that pollinator, bite it really quickly and subdue it. So they get their name, the green lynx, because of this pouncing hunting strategy that they use. So they don't use webs like a traditional spider would to catch their prey. Instead, they're active hunters, they're true predators. They're going out there, they're killing and eating their prey. Um, so they do have a pretty strong venom. It's strong enough to bring down a bumblebee, but it's meant for bugs and not for people. So they don't bite humans very often, um, but if they did, you'd get some swelling, some inflammation. It wouldn't be great, but it wouldn't be like a bite from a brown recluse or a black widow. But it's very rare that they bite people. I don't think I know anyone who's ever been bitten, but very interesting. They're very fast. It's cool to see them actually catch a bug. So we have another green lynx spider here. They've been quite abundant today, which is really excellent. Um, but so every single spider that you've seen today is all the same age. They're an annual species. So they're born in late fall, where they come out of their little egg sac as spiderlings, and then they overwinter. So they stay mostly dormant throughout the winter. And then during spring and summer, they spend all of their time catching as much prey, eating as much as they can. They molt a few times, so they go through a couple of different instars until they reach adulthood in the summertime. When they reach adulthood, they mate. So around late summer, they mate. 
And then the female, which this one is a female, will lay an egg sac in the fall, which she will ferociously guard. So she actually sits up on top of it and guards it from any predators who may want to come eat her developing spider babies. Um, and then she dies and that's the end of her life cycle. So they are an annual species. They do everything they need to do within the year. Um, and so whenever you see them in the field, they're all the same size. So the ones that I would see in early summer were a lot smaller than they are now at adulthood. Thanks so much for joining me today as we explored the lives of our green lynx spider neighbors. I know that spiders aren't everybody's favorite, so I hope that you at least gained a deeper understanding of the lives that they lead in the savannas near our homes. If this was something that was super interesting to you, especially the color changing phenomenon that these spiders seem to exhibit, Dr. Miller and I study this in the lab. So we're either out here doing field experiments with the green links, or sometimes we collect them from the field and bring them back into the lab to do experiments and then re-release them to the field. Um, but if this is something that interests you, let us know. We would love to get you involved with the research, bring you out here to see the spiders um, and get you started on your own exploration of the mystery of color changing in spiders. It's pretty amazing. So let us know if you're interested if not, I'll be back next week with some other sort of creature that won't be a spider, um, but it should be fun regardless. Thanks so much. I'll see you at a different location next week.